This is Jeremy Clark of JeremyBytes.com, and today we'll be talking about extension methods. Extension methods allow us to add functionality to existing classes, even if they're classes that we don't own, and we don't have to subtype the class, we can add the functionality without cracking that class open at all. If you're using link, you're probably using already existing extension methods, but we can also create our own, and let's take a look at that and see what that means. In the solution I have here, I have four projects set up. One for our extension methods that we'll have. I also have two library classes that have our data in them. And I have a UI project, and this is just a WPF application that we'll be using to display our output. If we look in the libraries, I have a month library. And this is a static class called months. And it has a single static method called getMonths. And we can see here that this returns a list of string. If we look in the person library, we can see here that I have a static people class. And it has a single method called getPeople, which returns a list of person. And if we look at our person object down below, we can see this is a simple object that just has four properties. And it also has a two string that's been overridden so that we can get some good output when we ask for the string on this. Now both of these methods, if you notice, return a list. Now in our scenario, we want to create some additional functionality that we can add to a list. And this functionality is going to be to create a delimited string. So let's say I have a collection, like a collection of people or a collection of months, and I want to output it into a single string with a particular delimiter. So maybe I want a comma separated list or pipe delimited or maybe with tabs. And so what we'll see here is we can actually create a method to do that, and it will extend this list class without us having to create our own custom subclass. Now one thing I want to point out is neither of these libraries, if we look at the references, has a reference to our extensions project. So these are completely isolated, and we can treat these as if the DLLs were handed to us and we didn't even have access to the source code. So what we're going to do is we're going to come up to our extensions project and we're going to add a new class. Let's we'll just add a new class here and we'll call this JB Extensions since this will hold our extension methods. Now there's only three things that we need to do to create an extension method. First, we must have a public static class that holds our extension methods. So in this case, we'll make that JB extensions class public and static. And then our methods need to be public static methods. So let's go ahead and create our two delimited string method here. So it'll be a public static method that will re return a string and we'll call it two delimited string. And we're gonna go ahead and give it a generic type. For parameters, I'm going to use I innumerable of t. And we'll call this our input. And then I'll also have a string for a delimiter. So here we have our collection coming in, a delimiter coming in, and then a string going back out. Now I'm using I enumerable of T here, and that means that this will work on pretty much any collection that we have. Any class that implements I enumerable will be able to use this extension method. So let's go ahead and uh, create the text for this. So first we'll start by using a string builder for the output. And then we'll simply do a for each through each of our items that are in our input collection. And then we'll do, uh, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and just append our uh, items to string method to our string builder. And actually, let's go ahead and call this item rather than items. Now, for our delimiter, we don't want to put the, the delimiter on the first item, but we want to do it on every subsequent item. So we'll do a quick check to see if the output length is greater than zero, 
then we'll go ahead and append the delimiter. And then finally, we'll just return our output to string. So that will turn it back into a string. Let's go ahead and build this and make sure we don't have any errors there. Okay, so we build successfully. And here we have our potential extension method. Now I said there were three things that we needed to do. The first was to create a public static class. The second was to create a public static method. But then the third thing that we need to do is we need to add the this keyword to the first parameter. And we'll see what that means in just a moment. But for now, let's go ahead and see that we have a public static class with a public static method. That means that we can go ahead and interact with our classes the way we normally would with a static method. And then we'll see how extension methods can change that. Now for our UI, I have a very simple WPF application set up. We basically have two buttons and two text bo boxes. And we can see that these buttons actually don't do anything, but we do have one for our months and one for our people. If we go to the code behind on this, we'll see that we have event handlers already hooked up for both of our button clicks. So let's start by actually getting a collection of months. So let's do a list of string called months. And you'll notice here that I do have my months library already up here in my using statement. So we can say months.getMonths using our static class, and that will populate that months object. Now we want to take this and use our two delimited string method to populate our output box. So I have a month box, and we'll set its text property. And again, to start with, let's treat it just like we would any other static class. So my class is called JB Extensions. And I'll go ahead and do control dot and we'll bring in that using statement. Now you notice in our references, I do have that jeremybytes.extensions referenced in my UI project. And that means we can use two delimited string. And for our parameters, we can use months. And then we need a delimiter. And I'm going to do a comma and a space. So now if we run this application and click the Get Months button, we see our comma separated list. So after each month, we have a comma and a space. No surprises there. But with the extension method syntax, we can actually change the way that we're calling this method into something that's a little more intuitive and looks a lot more like we just extended our months class. So to do this, we'll set our months box.txt equal to, and for the extension method, we'll take that first parameter and use that as the object that we're calling this method on. So I'm going to take our months and move it to the front. And then when I say dot, notice that in IntelliSense, I have two delimited string as an option. That means I can select two delimited string but then didn't we have two parameters before? Well, we did. Well, our first parameters basically moved to the front. So our months parameter is now in the front. And if you notice, IntelliSense is telling us that we only need to include everything except the first parameter. Since we just have two parameters, you can see it's asking for the string delimiter parameter here. So I can go ahead and just put in that comma in the space again. And now when I run the application, you'll see we get exactly the same output that we did before. Let's do the same thing for our person class. So we'll create a list of person called people. And again, we'll use our person library's people object to go ahead and populate that collection. And then we also have a person box and we'll set its text property equal to people dot to delimited string. And in this case, We'll go ahead and use a space, a pipe, and a space. So now if we run the application, if we click Get Months, we'll see our comma separated months. When we click Get People, we'll see we have our pipe delimited collection of people. 
So you can see what we've done is we've made it look like two delimited string is actually part of this people object, even though it's not. And again, we get full IntelliSense on that. Now, when we're using an extension method, the one requirement is that we do need to include the using statement for that library. Now that makes perfect sense because even if we were using the static class by itself, we would need to go ahead and use that. So we need to make sure we have our using statement for this. And this is exactly how link works. Link is a set of extension methods that work on I enumerable when we're talking about link to objects. And when we include that library, we'll see that we get a lot more methods. Let's just take a look at that. If I say months dot, you can see I have a list here. It's not a huge list, um, but there's quite a few items in there. But if I add a using statement for system.link, now I have quite a few more. In fact, I have several dozen more items available to me, including this contains first, first or default, group by, join. All of the link methods are now available to us simply by including this namespace. And Visual Studio does include this namespace by default, so we don't need to worry about it in most situations. If you want more information on link, feel free to visit www.jeremybytes.com, and that is B-Y-T-E-S, where I do have demos of Lambda expressions, link, delegates, as well as the sample code for this extension method uh, sample. So go ahead and visit the links for, that are underneath the video and get more information on that. And be sure to visit jeremybytes.com for more information, demos, walkthroughs, and videos. Thank you.